Okay, so we're going to pick up here in three, two, one. Hey there students, Mr. Fugu here. In our video today, we're going to be looking at the demonstration involving what we're going to be doing here in Lab 9B. So our goal for what we're going to be doing here is to check a few different types of collisions hey, and see what's going on with the momentum. All right, momentum is an idea that we've been looking at with hey, collisions. And what we're going to be doing here is testing a few different collisions to see if the momentum, a total in our system, is actually conserved. Hey, now, what we're going to need to do in order to check that is to, well, I kind of go over our setup here. So I've got both of my carts and I've actually taken a moment to get them paired up. I've also got my Chromebook set up over here. You may be able to see them on the screen. And as I go through the collisions, I'll actually have the video show up so that you all can kind of see what's going on with the data portion of what we're doing. But I've gone ahead and got both of my carts connected here. Right? I'm actually going to take up these inserts here because we're going to check what's called an inelastic collision, which is going to be a collision in which the objects collide and do not stick together. For part of the lab that you'll be doing eventually, you're going to look at what we call a perfectly inelastic collision, where we'll be using the Velcro to collide the carts together, and an elastic collision, right, where we'll use the ring bumpers right, to model that collision time. Right? What we're looking at here in our lab yeah. is we're going to model an inelastic collision and see what happens with both the momentum and the energy. Now what we think should happen is that the momentum should ideally be mostly conserved and there should definitely be some loss of energy. That's what we think would happen here. Okay? So, <coughs> excuse me, in our scenario, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to model an inelastic collision and in doing that we're going to check two main things. Number one, we're going to check what's going on with the momentum. Is the momentum before and after the collision actually conserved? And then number two, we're going to check what's going on with the energy, specifically the kinetic energy in our system. Now, the nice thing is that both of those, well, quantities, momentum and kinetic energy, well, we need the same variables in order to calculate for them, right? For momentum, we're going to need the mass and velocity of our objects, both before and after they collide. And for kinetic energy, we'll also need mass and velocity, but the calculation portion will look a bit different, okay? So really, in order to, well, kind of go through this, we're going to need to know what the mass of our objects are, as well as what their velocity is before and after the collision. So one of the great things about our equipment setup here is that we actually have the ability to get good velocity data. We haven't had that option before, and now we do, which is great. So one thing I am going to do here is I'm going to make this a little bit more interesting, because right now the cart should have about the same mass. So I'm going to take out some of the masses that come along with our cart systems, and we're going to add them in here, right? Because I don't just want the carts to have the same mass. I want to uh, make this a little more challenging on myself. And this is actually a condition that when you all go through the lab, we're going to give to you all. So I'm going to kind of model here roughly what you all are going to be doing. Again, you're going to be checking different collision types, things like perfectly inelastic and elastic. Here I'm going to model an inelastic, where the object should collide and bounce off, and there should be some loss of kinetic energy. So I've got my carts here. Now, a couple of things. For reference sake, yeah. Rainier refers to this cart uh, as what is called the, the green cart. Right? Now, again, I didn't come up with a name. I personally think it's a bit more of a turquoise, but just my opinion. Right? And then this one over here is what Rainier calls the yellow cart. So when I do have the data pulled up, which you all will see here in just a moment, yeah, when it says velocity g, it's referring to velocity of the green cart, or velocity y, it's referring to velocity of the yellow cart. And the same would go for position g, position y, acceleration g, acceleration y. Uh, for this lab, we won't necessarily need the force sensor enabled, so I won't have that going for what we've got today. Okay, okay. so what we want to do is we've got our setup here. We want to check, well, what's going on before and after the collision. Now, as we collide them, so for example, something like this, their velocity is going to change well before and after the collision, but their mass should stay relatively the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get those mass values here real quick because those aren't going to be things that change throughout our experiment. So I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to get the mass of the green cart. And as well, I'm going to get the mass of the yellow cart. Okay, so I've got my scale here. I'll get this turned on. <coughs> Excuse me. Some water. 
Okay, I'm gonna take the masses off. Might be a little bit easier. Cards on, two additional masses. We're looking at about 533 grams. I'm gonna jot that down for the green cart. 533 grams. And I'm also going to convert that to kilograms, so divide by a factor of 1,000. So that would be 0 0.533 kilograms. That way when I plug into my momentum and kinetic energy equations, we're in our standard unit. Now for the yellow part, I'll do the same. I'll take this off the track. And I'll go here. Okay, we're looking at 410 grams. Okay. So, should no matter which slot I place that in. So 410 is what we're looking at for the mass of the yellow part. Okay, 0 0.410 kg. Okay, so I've got my masses here. Now, what I need to do is I need to set up a collision. And, well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to have the carts moving. Now, I don't necessarily have to have both of the carts moving in order for them to collide, but I definitely need one of them moving. And ultimately, when we get into the lab, I'm going to leave some of that up to you all, exactly how and where you want to set up your carts. We're really not that concerned with the position here, because we're mostly concerned with, well, their velocity before and after the collision. Here's what I will say. If I put, let's say, uh, one of the carts at rest, let's say I leave the yellow cart here, hopefully things should be level. Now, yeah, one thing that might be nice about setting up one of my carts to be at rest is that that's going to mean that this cart has no momentum or kinetic energy before the collision. So that may make my analysis a little bit easier. If I wanted to, I could have them both moving, like so, prior to the collision, or I could have them both moving the same direction, one going faster than the other. I really can model this any way I want to. However, to keep things simple, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the yellow cart at rest, and then I'm gonna collide the green cart into the yellow like so. Now, I'm also going to make sure I've got a little bit of space between the yellow cart and the end of the track. Because, for example, if I had it here, now you watch this. Right? Notice that after a, the green cart hits the yellow, the yellow hits the wall, comes back and hits the green cart. So there are actually multiple collisions that are going on that may, may be, well, it's kind of challenging for us to sort between. I really want to clearly see just the one collision between the green cart and the yellow cart. So I'm going to leave the yellow cart here and then I'll collide the green cart into it, and so I can clearly see that specific collision. Okay, so here's how I'm going to set this up. I'm gonna draw a bit of a picture to kind of model what we've got here. So here's our track, and first we're gonna look at the kind of initial, or before, situation. What's going on prior to the objects colliding? Now, from your vantage point, we've got the yellow cart over here, and I'm going to write out that the velocity of the yellow cart initial, so VYI, is zero meters per second. We're going to set the yellow cart initially at rest. And then the green cart is going to be over here, and we're going to move the green cart toward the yellow cart. And the velocity of the green cart initial, right now we don't know. So I'm going to leave that blank, and here in a moment, once we set up to collect our data, I'll fill that number in. Okay, so hopefully we're feeling pretty good so far. Now, one thing I want to watch for is this. The carts do have a built-in directional system. You'll notice on the top of them, they have a plus X. So with the way I've set things up, the yellow cart's going to be moving from your perspective out to the right, which is going to mean that that velocity is going to be going to show up as a positive number because it's going to be moving to the right after it hits the after the green cart hits the yellow. However, the green cart, you'll notice its plus x is actually to the left, your left, if you will. Which means, if I move the green card this way, it's going to show up as a negative velocity. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna pull up the uh, software system, so hopefully that should be showing up on your screen now, and I'm gonna show you how to switch some things around so we can actually set up to make this a bit easier. We can actually reverse the direction of the green card so it reads as a positive velocity. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'm going to say, we should now see on the screen. Uh, down here, I've got position G, position Y. Again, I'm not too concerned with what the positions are because I mostly care about the velocity. But for the green cart, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on green. And see where it says reverse? I'm going to click that. So now, you'll notice as I move the green cart, 
its position is going up in the positive direction, okay, even though it's moving okay, against or in what it would generally consider to be the negative direction. Very easy switch than what I've done. Now, I'm not really concerned with the position data, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to just be one graph, because really all I, can, all I care about is the velocity data. So if I click over here, I want velocity of G, I'm gonna turn position off, and I want velocity of Y. I want both of my velocities to show up here, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna get my cart set up, and now we're gonna test the collision. So again, I'm not really concerned with what the positions are. I don't even need to zero the position sensors out because I'm not using that data at all in what I'm doing. So here we go, I'm gonna hit a collect. Three, two, one, collect. Okay, so I've got here, it looks like I kind of collected a little bit more data than I need, but let's see what we've got. So I'm gonna click this zoom button. Okay, so one of the nice things about our software system, as you can see, is it's already pre-color coded. So you'll see the green card was moving, speeding up, speeding up. This is probably the region where I was pushing on it for a very short period of time. And then notice how it went at a mostly constant speed until it starts to drop, right? Now that velocity is dropping because the green card is hitting the yellow card. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I pick a point just before the yellow card begins to move. So notice here, and sometimes it may be helpful, I can click on my data table right here. Sometimes it actually may be helpful okay, to have this pulled up. And if I click on a point, you'll notice it highlights it over in my table. So I'm gonna scroll over to where I see velocity of the yellow. That was at rest. And see how right here, this is the last point where the velocity of the yellow card was zero. And then after that, it begins to go up and up and up. So I'm gonna highlight this point. I'm gonna see velocity of the green was about 0.379 meters per second. And you'll notice it also shows up on my graph over here, which is really nice. So that's the number we're going to use for the initial velocity of the green card. Oh, my board went to sleep there. Let's see if I can get it up and going again. Okay, so velocity of green in the show, we're gonna use 0 0.379 meters per second. And at this point, we now actually have everything we need to find our initial momentum. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got our momentum initial. I'm gonna call this P sub I, or momentum initial. If you see P sub zero or P naught, something like this, that notation works as well, right? Whatever you're more comfortable with. Sometimes I like to use initial and final with the momentum terms. And that's going to equal the momentum of the green card plus the momentum of the yellow card. And momentum is mass times velocity. So it's going to be mass of green, velocity of green initial, m times v, plus mass of yellow times velocity of yellow initial. And we actually have all of these numbers now. I checked the masses before we tested this, and I just got my velocities. Now, I know that the yellow card was initially at rest, which means zero times any number should give me zero. So I'm just gonna cross that out to show that it goes to zero because I have no velocity there for the yellow card, meaning I have no momentum. I do like to write it in my equation so I always start with all of my terms, but I can now show that that cancels out. Okay, so the initial momentum is really all with the green card, and now we'll just plug in and find our number. So go ahead and grab out your calculator, and you can do this with me. Check my results. Uh, so I've got mass of the green card. Let me double check that, 0 0.532, 533. Okay, zoom up, or scroll up just a little bit. So 0 0.533 kilograms multiplied by the velocity, 0 0.379. I'm getting some of my numbers. 79, I couldn't remember if it was 79 or 97. Meters per second. I'll multiply those terms together, 0.379 times 0.533, and I'm getting about 0 0.202. 0 0.202, and that would be kilogram meters per second. I'm gonna box that number because it is an important number. All right, that is the initial momentum we have in our system total, right? Because the green card had momentum, the yellow card had no momentum, it was at rest, so all the momentum initially is with the green card. Okay, so now uh, what I'll do is, again, that was one thing we wanna check. We also wanna check the kinetic energy to see if there's some kinetic energy lost. Remember the goal of our lab is to check to see is momentum conserved and also what's going on with the kinetic energy. 
Inelastic collisions should be collisions in which some energy is lost, and we want to check to see that. Okay, so I've got that. Let me do the kinetic energy in a different color just so there's a little bit of contrast. So kinetic energy, initial. Well, that's going to be the kinetic energy of the green card plus the kinetic energy of the yellow card. So one half mass of green, velocity of green initial squared, plus one half mass of yellow, velocity of yellow initial squared. And we'll get those are vectors. Okay. Now, very similar to what we saw with the momentum, okay, the kinetic energy of the yellow card should be zero because the velocity is zero, and zero squared is zero times any other values is going to give us zero. But again, I like to write it in just so I know it's an object I'm accounting for, but I'm now showing that that term is zero. Okay, so now I'll plug in what I know for the mass and velocity of the green cart. Mass was 0.533 kilograms. Velocity is, or was, is, show up my tenses there, 0.379 meters per second, quantity squared. Okay, so I've got 1 half times 0.533 times 0.379 squared. I'm getting 0 0.0383. Okay, so our kinetic energy initial is 0 0.0383 joule. I'm also going to box that term because I will come back to it and reference it later. Now we have a really small amount of kinetic energy here. Our objects here, our card is well, you know, about half a kilogram, and our velocity is also very low. We're going, you know, roughly that's going to be you know, a mile an hour, if not less. And so I mean, we shouldn't have a whole lot of kinetic energy. OK, so I, that's how we can find our first a, kind of initial condition down, right? We checked our mass, and then we, well, went through a collision, collected our data on the velocity, and got what we needed. And now what we want to do is check the final conditions and see how those align. Is our momentum mostly conserved? Is it about 0.202 kilogram meters per second? And do we have a loss of energy? OK, so now I'm going to kind of model out, draw a little picture here of our final conditions, just so we can track our values. So here's our yellow cart, and I'm going to run a reference back. I'm just going to write it down. Mass of yellow is 0 0.41 kilograms. And now we need the velocity of the yellow cart final, which we'll get here in just a moment. It was moving to the right, so I'll show the arrow there. And then we've got our green cart. Uh, mass of green was 0 0.5 kilograms, and velocity of green final, we will find out. Now it's likely that the green cart is now going to be traveling slower, okay? and the yellow cart should obviously have a non-zero velocity because it was initially at rest, now it's moving. Okay, so I'm going to come back over to a, my data table here, and I actually may close out the data table in just for a moment. Okay, so now and what I want you to notice here is, and which numbers do we pick? Well, and see this region in here where the green card's velocity is going down? That's the time during the collision right there, and the yellow card's velocity is going up. And so what I want to do here is, I want to pick a point after they've kind of stabilized a little bit. And ideally, it shouldn't matter too much exactly the point I choose, but I want to choose a point just after the collision. And so again, it shouldn't matter if I go here or here. One thing I do want to watch is this. I do want to try to get a point pretty close to right after the collision, because there may be some small amounts of friction or air resistance that may well take some momentum here. So I'm going to choose a point right here, right after the collision. Uh, I'm going to go about right there. Okay, so 0 0.251 for the yellow, 0 0.179 for the green. Okay, so yellow, 0 0.251 meters per second. And green, we're looking at 0 0.179. Okay, that's where I get my numbers from I, my uh, software system. And now that I have those, I, I can actually find both the final momentum and the final kinetic energy. So we'll start with the momentum, just because that was the first thing we did last time. So momentum final, here we go. The final, this is going to be mass of the green part, velocity of the green part, final, mass times velocity, plus momentum of the yellow part, which is also mass times velocity and just for this other object. So now let's take the numbers that we have and we'll plug them in and see what we get for our total momentum final. So mass of the green cart was 0.533 kilograms times velocity of the green cart after the collision, 0.179 meters per second, plus mass of the yellow cart, which is 0.410 kilograms, 
times the velocity of the other car, 0.251 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment and plug this in, and I would encourage you to do it along with me. Now, I'm going to find the momentum of the green car first, then the momentum of the yellow car, then I will add them together. I'll talk about why here in just a moment. 0.533 times 0.179, I'm getting 0 0.0954 kilogram meters per second, plus 0 0.410 times 0.251, I'm getting 0 0.1029, so I'll call that 103 kilogram meters per second. Okay, and then to add those together, I'll bring this term down because I'll be clear with what I'm finding here. Uh, point, oh, oh gosh, plus 0 0.095. Okay, I'm getting about 0 0.198 kilogram meters per second. And that would be my final momentum. Now the initial, if I come back to my previous page, the initial momentum was, looks like 0 0.202, the final 0.198. Are those numbers exactly identical? About as close as you can get, right? I mean, if I go to, pardon me, Bell, we're actually here on the day that, man, the A was supposed to be in school, so hint, hint. But, those numbers aren't exactly the same, there seems to be a tiny loss. Now, if I wanted to find a percentage loss, which this isn't something I'm maybe going to require you to do, but just so you know how to do it, uh, if I take the final, so the momentum I end with, 0.198, minus what I start with, 0.202, and then divide by what I start with. What I'm really doing here is taking, here's the momentum I lose, divided by the momentum I start with, and then I'm gonna multiply by 100. And I'm going to convert that to a percentage. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding what's the percentage of my momentum that I lose. So 0.198 minus 0.202 divided by 0.202 times 100. I'm getting negative, this is 1.98. I'm going to call that negative 2%. What that means is I'm losing minus 2% of my momentum. Now, is that a significant amount? I would say based on the numbers that we have, not really, because if I were to go to two significant figures, this number would be 0.2, and our initial momentum would also be 0.2. So really, our data here is doing a pretty good job of confirming that the momentum is pretty well conserved. Now, as we've talked about before, where is that 2% of our momentum going? Why is it not exactly the same number? Well, there's a lot of factors that can go into that. Hey, my mass, even though I'm saying it's 533, maybe it's 532.8, or maybe there's a little bit of a inaccuracy with my mass. I do think the velocities we're getting from the software are really, really good numbers, so I'm not too worried about those. But there also could be a very small amount of air resistance or a small amount of friction that could slowly or slightly affect our numbers here. But for the most part, we're getting something that does a good job to confirm the momentum is in fact concerned. And, and that's ideally what we think should happen, and which is good. We want to see that the momentum in the real world actually is concerned. Now, the last thing I'm going to do here is check, or well, at least one of the last things, is to check the kinetic energy. Because, as we've said, with an inelastic collision, the momentum should be conserved, but the kinetic energy they should not be. So I'm going to go one half, mass of green, velocity of green, final, one half mv squared for the green part, plus one half mv squared for the yellow part. Now, I'm not as concerned with the individual amounts of energy here, so I'm actually just going to plug all this in and get my number. And again, I'm going to come back to why I did the momentum separately and then together here in a moment. Uh, so mass of green was 0.533 kilograms. Final velocity was point, I'm going to say 179. Yes. Oh, like that. There we go. Meters per second squared plus one half mass of yellow, 0.41 kilograms. Velocity was 0.251. Running on space a little bit here. Sorry about that. Just gonna round up to 0.41 and save a little space. I'm leave my unit out there. 0.251 meters per second. Sorry about the cramped space. So we've got 0.5 times 0.533, 0.179 squared plus one half, 0 0.41, 0 0.251 squared. Okay, I'm getting about 0 0.0215 
joules. That would be my kinetic energy final. Okay, so it looks like my kinetic energy goes from 0 0.038 down to 0 0.021. Now again, you may be saying, oh, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, those are really, really close. But look at the percentage. If I take 0 0.0215 minus 0 0.0. 383 divided by 0 0.0383 and then multiply by 100. Again, I'm finding my loss over my total starting energy. 0 0.0215, 0 0.0383, 0 0.0383, 100. They're looking at a loss of about 44%, right? Which is a significant amount of energy loss. And again, this is also another piece of evidence as to why when we look at the collisions, momentum is oftentimes what we're focusing on the most because in a collision, right, as long as there are no significant external forces, the total momentum should be conserved, whereas the energy for most collision types will not be conserved. If we're looking at an elastic collision, which you all will be doing later, right, and that will be one we can model with the ring bumpers, that's a collision in which the kinetic energy should mostly be conserved. So it's not the case that all collisions have energy loss, again, sorry about the bell, but most do. Okay, so uh, this is a good model of what you all are going to be doing in your lab later on. There is one last small thing I want to touch on, and that's this. What we saw here, with, well, the data we collected, was that the total momentum in our system is pretty well conserved. We only lost about 2%. But I want you to think about the objects separately. What if we were to look at only the green cart? Is only the green cart's momentum being conserved? Well, no. Right? The green cart started with, if you can go back to it, sometimes the board doesn't cooperate. The green cart went from, well, we had about 0 0.202 kilogram meters per second. It went down to, You get there, 0 0.202, went down to 0 0.095. So for the green cart, something I want you to see is this. It went from 0 0.202 kilogram meters per second before the collision down to 0 0.095 kilogram meters per second. So the green cart lost some momentum here. It lost 0 0.202 minus 0 0.095. The green cart lost. 0 0.107 kilogram meters per second. All right. If I were to actually take, you know, final minus initial, right, to show the change. Now the yellow part uh, had a final momentum of. I come back here again. I'm not necessarily going to ask you to do this in the lab, but I do think it is important to see. Yellow part ended with 0.103. So 0 0.103 kilogram meters per second. That's the final minus the initial, which would be zero. The yellow cart gained 0 0.103 kilogram meters per second. So here's what I want you to see. The momentum that the green cart is losing is almost identical to the momentum that the yellow cart is gaining. That's actually going to launch us into something we do later with what we call impulse. Not really the focus of what we're doing here, but it is kind of a cool thing to see that the momentum lost by one object is pretty well equal to the momentum gained by another object. Again, not something I'm going to require you to check in the lab, but it is a very unique well, concept when we talk about momentum and conservation. What conservation actually means with the momentum here is that what one object is losing, the other is gaining in such a way that the total momentum actually does stay the same. Now for you all, where you'll be going with things is you'll be taking a, the Velcro and using that to check what we call a perfectly inelastic collision. So I'll do just a kind of a quick demo on that before we wrap things up here. So with perfectly inelastic, the objects will collide and stick together. Again, there should be some kinetic energy loss. That's how we'll model that collision type. Sorry about that. And then with an elastic collision, we'll use the ring bumpers. The objects should collide and bounce apart from each other, and there, there should be no loss, ideally, of kinetic energy. And that's what we're going to check. For you all, a, you'll have a sheet to kind of fill out, so make sure you check those things out on Canvas. Now, hopefully this was a good demonstration on what we're doing here with the lab, and a good application of momentum conservation. 
As always, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. Other than that, good luck.